Hello fellow bookquesters, it is I, Aaron the Bookquester, and today I had this one of the greatest fantasy novels, a true classic here, and the name is The Neverending Story, by Michael Ende, translated by Ralph Mannheim. Well, this is actually a German novel, but it was translated by Ralph Mannheim as aforementioned, and let's get right on. Bastian Balthazar Box is a fat little boy, pathetic, without courage, and and bullied by several people, and neglected by his father after his mother's death. One day, he finds a book and steals it from a local bookshop, and his name was the never-ending story. And he read about the book. And the book, well, it, that's the same title as, you know, the book that we're actually reading, Never in the Story. And then, he, the book was about the adventures of Atreyu, who was trying to rescue the childlike empress from dying. It was in the realm of Fantastica, and there the childless, the childlike emperor ruled them all. So, but if the child emperor, childlike emperor die, empress dies, Fantastica ends. So Atreyu had to find a cure for her disease. But her disease was that she needed a new name. And she said, and Atreyu said that after going through many adventures, she said he said to. The child, childlike empress, she, he said to her, I have failed the quest. I am sorry I didn't find your cure. But, but, she, ass she assured Atreyu that he had succeeded well. And Bastian thought, well, maybe the savior is me, but it was too ridiculous to comprehend. And so, so, the childlike empress, since Bastian refused to say her new name, she went to go to an old man who wrote down everything that happened in Fantastica, basically the author of the never-ending story. And then, when, when the old man repeated everything that happened from the start of the book, well, then he believed of the magic of the never-ending story. Then Bastian, he became, then he, Bastian, he proclaimed the new name of the Childlike Empress. And her name was the Moon Child. And in her gratitude, the Childlike Empress gave, gave the, the gem, Aruin, that will grant wishes for the Bastian. Bastian Balthazar Box. And she was given the beautiful necklace. And he was also and then he was given the power to create Fantastica again. And then he created the many colored death, a lion that only he could tame and ride. The lion and Bastian became great friends. And the lion gifted him with a great sword. And it was a magic sword. And every time that it was needed, it jumped in Bastian's hand. And they fought with the great powerful sword. And I don't really recall the name of the sword. But I'm pretty sure it was like Scandia or something like that. And with the magic sword, he went. And he went to a tournament to make find a hero that must be a company Bastion. Well the savior of Fantastica anyway. And Bastion he kept his identity a secret and entered the contest and humbled a proud hero that that he thought could be ten times more powerful than Bastion by the other box. But Bastion wasn't the feeble fat boy that he was in his world. Now, 
He was someone else. He was handsome, he was strong, and he was dashing young hero. And he could make wishes come true with his beautiful arrow in the gem. What he did not expect, however, was that every time he made a wish, a memory of his past life in another world disappeared. And when all his wishes were used up, when no memories were left, not even the memory of his father and mother, not even the memory of his name, Bastian Balthazar Box, that day was when he would become nameless, stupid, and uh, just another nameless person milling around in, in the city of the old emperors. And Bastian, before he found out, made many ridiculous wishes come true. And the Zayide, the, the witch, tried to manipulate Bastian into making her the Empress of Fantastica. But Bastian, Bastian, when he was getting crowned, a huge force that was led by Atreyu, he was banished from Bastian's little group, committee of army, when, you know, when Atreyu tried to steal the gem because it was corrupting Bastian. Well, Atreyu came with a great force of centaurs, luck dragon. He rode a luck dragon named Falkor. They were friends, they were comrades, and Falkor, he did his master, his friend, his comrade very well. And so the five luck dragons, centaurs, great eagles, and beasts from all over fantastic rose against Bastion Balthazar Bucks. And he rose against Atreyu and wounded him in a terrible blow. And Bastion, well, he truly regretted that decision. And then he found out about the city of the of the old emperors and also tried to become emperors crown himself emperor well then they had become nameless and stupid and those who lived in that horrible little city and so bastian knew he had only about three or four wishes left and so he wished finally back he finally managed to wish himself back to the real world and there he finds another person the actual the old bookkeeper and he finds out that he the old bookkeeper too had went to fantastica and they knew they would soon exchange experiences and then the story ends like always Let's see uh wait best Mr. Coriander, the bookkeeper, closed the door gently and looked after father and son. Bastian Balthazar Box, he grumbled. If I'm not mistaken, you will show many others the way to Fantastica, and they will bring us the water of life. Mr. Coriander was not mistaken, but that's another story and shall be told another time. That's the classic end of the book. And the tr story is truly never ending. And all the long tales and cuts always say, well, that's another story and shall be told another time. And it truly is a never ending story. And one of the best classic fantastic fantasy books to ever exist. And great book, guys. And like always, your book was star and the book was star.